These are baby angelfish. They're three days old and they appear to be normal in every way. The heart is pumping blood, the gills are pink, and their spines are nice and straight. Their pectoral fins have also started to grow and they appear to be functioning normally. Their jaws are fully formed and they can open and close their mouths. They're also active and wriggle like they should. But not all of their brothers and sisters are quite so lucky. This little fish has some serious problems. The heart is tiny and seems to be enclosed in what looks to be a massive air bubble. The heart should be a reddish color, but it looks gray and I see very little blood anywhere. The gills are also small and colorless. The little fish also has a crooked spine. The mouth is deformed and non-functional. It does have small pectoral fins, but they also appear to be non-functional. And it seems pretty obvious that this little angel will not survive. And here's two more mutant angelfish who seem to have a similar problem with an air bubble that is formed around the heart. And now I'm starting to wonder if this deformity could be caused by my use of an air stone beneath the developing eggs. Could this problem be the result of having air stones beneath the eggs when they're hatching and somehow the air becomes trapped inside the newborn fish? If this is the case, then it might be best to turn the air stone off as soon as the eggs begin to hatch, and always be sure to place the air stone far enough away from the eggs so that the rising bubbles don't come into contact with the eggs or the wrigglers. And that brings us to our next mutant angelfish from the same batch of eggs. It's another wriggler with an air bubble around its heart. The heart is pale and appears bloodless, but in this case, the blood is collected at the bottom of the air bubble. Many of the defects that I see involve the blood in one way or another. In this case, there's blood collecting around the bottom of both of this wriggler's eyes. This pooling of the blood around the eyes is far from normal, and the chances of this little fish surviving are not very good. And then there's these two fish. The one on the left appears to be healthy and will probably live. You can clearly see that the blood of the healthy fish is red and that the gills are nice and pink. But the blood of the fish on the right is very pale and the gills are almost colorless. So this little angelfish has some serious problems. It's still alive for now. The heart is beating and it wriggles every once in a while, but its jaws don't seem to be working, so its mouth is locked in the open position, which makes it look as if the poor little fish is screaming in pain, or maybe even fear. The angelfish on the right has died. Unfortunately, when you're this helpless and this small, there are so many things that can go wrong. And the best that we can do as fish keepers is to educate ourselves about the lives of our fish and then provide them with the best life that we can. Mother Nature will then do her part by providing us with countless living things that enrich our world and make it a more beautiful place to live. And that brings us to the end of another video. Please help support my work to continue bringing you these one-of-a-kind productions by supporting this channel in any way that you can. Thank you for your time, and I really hope that you have a beautiful day.